we don't know what's going to happen or how it's going to evolve. What we will know is, will it continue to be effective or will that decline? If we see readership decline, outreach decline, then we can surmise after three months, four months, five months of that, that, hey, maybe we need to make a shift to people getting bored of this. And we will. My question for you is, how do you think this newsletter is going to evolve over the next year? Yours or newsletters in general? We could talk either. So what I'm doing is I'm telling, you know, for the most part, probably 80, 20, 80 percent kind of real life stories. And then 20 percent is kind of my own insights, thoughts, marination on 15, 20 years doing this. Or does it have to evolve? I really enjoy your question because I have a few different things to say about it. One thing that I talk to clients about a lot is our goal is to produce orange juice. Our orange tree in the backyard is producing tons of oranges. All we have to do is squeeze them. We figured it out. The tree produces oranges. The world wants orange juice. Let's just keep squeezing oranges. This is an old Gary Vaynerchuk one too, which is funny. Uh, people get so confused or off track and they suddenly decide, maybe my clients want raspberry juice. And then they start going searching for the raspberry bushel. And it's like, this is working. Just keep squeezing. Right? We don't have to plant any raspberry vines. We don't have to research how to grow raspberries, right? We have the oranges. So for you, you asked the question of what, how is it going to evolve? What are we going to have to do? I don't know that we don't know that it has to evolve yet. Now, likely with all things. It, maybe it's just getting better at telling the story. Sure. Maybe they get longer. We don't know what's going to happen or how it's going to evolve. What we will know is, will it continue to be effective or will that decline? If we see readership decline, outreach decline, then we can surmise after three months, four months, five months of that, that, hey, maybe we need to make a shift. That people are getting bored of this and we will. Yeah. And I, I think one really interesting, you know, sometimes you learn from mistakes. I think we all hopefully learn from mistakes. And we had a little, uh, I had a technical snafu. <laughs> now I've had two technical snafus, but we'll focus on the main one because the main one affected a lot of people. The second snafu really only affected you. But snafu. Hey, I don't. I don't like being put on the back burner on this. I, I know. All right. So snafu number one is we made some changes to the website. I didn't change some things on the back end that I need to do on the delivery of the email, and it didn't go out. And I didn't know that it didn't go out. And I was coaching a basketball game at the time, and I look at my phone, and I've got like thirty six messages on LinkedIn. Wait, wait, no bullshit. You actually? How many people like actually reached out? It was a bunch, like thirty. Really? Like? Like legit. Hey, Nick, I'm sitting here with Lisa. We're having our coffee. Where's my newsletter? That's so good. <laughs> we, on Saturday mornings, we sit and we read your newsletter together. Then we talk about it while we drink our coffee. That makes me the happiest. You have no idea. So sometimes you have to make a mistake to learn that people are like actually excited to get it. You know, I would never have known that had I not made a mistake. So like now I want to do more, do it better, tell more stories. It's working. People want the orange juice. Let's just keep squeezing the oranges. I had one guy who I've been talking to forever and I jokingly said, it's like, yeah, it's like this week it was just for clients. And he's like, well, what do I need to do to be a client? <laughs>